Hello, welcome to the Monday, April 30th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. I mentioned Tom was working on some exploits against the new Drupal vulnerability. He published his post on Friday. Now, sort of interesting here that uh, while they're using this brand new Drupal exploit, it's sort of a little bit of flashback here in the sense that they're defacing the site using a Kurdish propaganda and then they're actually registering themselves with Zone H. I didn't even know that Zone H was still around. Zone H is a defacement mirror. That's where hackers take credit for defacing websites. It was a big thing when I got started in InfoSec, but of course, not so much these last few years. And Checkpoint published a blog post showing how PDFs can be used to steal Windows NTLM credentials. The problem with NTLM credentials is that whenever a client connects to an SMB server, it automatically tries to authenticate. So the trick that's usually being used in order to extract these credentials is I'm sending you a document that contains content that appears to be located on an SMB share. So as the user opens the PDF, the PDF reader tries to connect to the SMB share and with that it transmits the user's credentials. Now they're hashed, but we all know hashes can be brute forced. Now don't wait for Adobe to fix this. Adobe is actually referring to Microsoft and Microsoft's guidance is to disable NTLM single sign-on authentication for public resources, which should limit the impact of this problem. And well, I've mentioned it multiple times before, you should block all outbound SMB connections. This is just one of many ways how an hacker could possibly trick you into sending credentials to a malicious SMB share. And talking about Microsoft and bugs that won't be fixed anytime soon, a researcher from Romania published a denial of service exploit against Windows 7 and Windows 10 that can be tricked by a malicious NTFS volume. Now, in order to exploit this, and this is why Microsoft did assign this uh, low priority and also did not assign it a CVE, you have to actually have physical access to the system. You have to plug in a USB stick with a malicious file system to the system, which will then trigger a system crash. Tricky part here is the system does not have to be actually logged in. So this will work even on a locked system. Of course, there have been multiple issues with the entire problem that hardware is auto recognized and configured even if you're not logged in to the system. For example, I think two or three years ago, we had the problem with USB ethernet adapters that could then again be used to extract credentials or at least to assign malicious parameters to a system. Now, people who have to worry about this kind of vulnerability are people that have to leave systems like for example kiosks and the like exposed to the public, your best defense there is to prevent physical access to USB and other ports. And we got an interesting talk at Hack in a Box in Amsterdam about vulnerabilities in Apple's HomeKit ecosystem or really more in its MFI embedded security modules. This chip is what's referred to as a secure element. It's essentially a little CPU with some software on it that does facilitate secure communication between devices. Now, this is actually a pretty nifty idea and this, for example, allows an iPhone to transmit its Wi-Fi password securely to any device that is also equipped with one of these chips. The problem, however, as it turns out, and this is sort of really what this talk is about, is that at one point, the device itself that receives this Wi-Fi password needs to be able to communicate its Wi-Fi interface. So there has to be a mechanism for the secure element to communicate with the operating system of the device in order to accomplish this. 
And this is sort of where things of course then can go bad. The threat scenario here is that you have a device in your network that was compromised and that hacker could now load software into this device to get your Wi-Fi password and with that further compromise your network. Now, the latest version of iOS uh, did at least include a partial fix for this problem, but of course, that fix really only addresses issues with the iOS device itself, not so much with uh, the device that actually receives the data from the iOS device. And the NCC group came out with a pretty useful tool that's Acer Car. Acer Car, not really sure how to pronounce it. It's a tool that allows you to assess the security of your Acer Microsoft Cloud setup. The tool is a set of PowerShell scripts that review the settings for about 14 different elements, uh, things like Azure SQL databases, Active Directory, of course, the infamous storage accounts, and then summarizes various security issues that it finds along the way. The output is presented in a JSON file, so that shouldn't be too difficult to parse, I believe. There are also provisions to output it in XML or CSV if that's preferred. Given all the attacks we're seeing against these cloud deployments, this is certainly an important tool that you should take a look at to see if it does fill a gap in whatever assessments you're already doing for your Azure accounts. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.